welcome to How Inez Rolls. Today, Paul and I are getting in the kitchen to work on something that we hardly ever eat. Meatloaf. We have a recipe from the Traeger cookbook and we can't wait to get started. So recently I just went and I got like the best price on ground beef. It was a dollar a pound. So I have a four pounds of ground beef, 80-20. So I thought, let's do something different. Let's make a meatloaf. And so Paul and I had been talking about it and he had the suggestion to put it on the Traeger, which I can't wait to try it. So what we're gonna do is show you step-by-step step how easy it is to put together a meatloaf to get ready to put on the grill. All right, Paul. Hi. What's up? <laughs> he, it was his idea to do the Traeger version of this meatloaf. Mm -hmm. So we are ready to get started. It's pretty easy, it looks like. Yep. Yeah, so I think we had all the ingredients. So what we're doing is doubling the recipe because I have, like I said, four pounds or close to four pounds. And I will tell you a little hint as I was doing some research. 85% is like the ideal um, meatloaf because if you get too high um, or I guess lower in fat so like, like 90 or 93 then it can get dry it can get a little dry mm -hmm. so we need that fat to keep it moist so ours is a little fattier it's 80 20 80 20 is good for hamburgers yeah so we may have a little bit of extra juice so we'll figure that out as we keep going but let's make this right now all right so first up you're going to need uh, milk how much milk are they gonna need Milk is going to be half a cup. And then Worcestershire sauce? Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. How about onions? Onions. It says quarter cup finely minced onion. Okay, so we're using dehydrated onions. So quarter cup. We'll yeah. figure that out. Yeah. And then garlic powder? Garlic powder is a teaspoon. Teaspoon. And then it says like your favorite barbecue um, seasoning, which is like a tablespoon, right? A tablespoon, yes and some breadcrumbs. We're gonna need, I think, a cup, right? One cup. One cup, and then two eggs. So you can see here, we are doubling the recipe, so that's why I have all that. So let's do this. There's the beautiful meat. Let's put it in the bowl. All right, so we have our meat in the bowl, and Paul's gonna start putting the breadcrumbs in. I'll start cracking eggs. So are you guys like, get your hands in there and mix it, or? I have a spoon in there and I, I remember my mom making this and she would just put her hands up in that. Um, I think I probably will just because I'll get frustrated with the spoon. And then um, do we wait until um, with the with the milk? It says to add the eggs last. For reals? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm kind of a throw it all in kind of person. Um, okay, let me, I'll, I know the trigger rub was a, a tablespoon. Right now. That's okay, more than Mary, that's it. And then the garlic was a teaspoon each. Mm hmm So you need those one. Do you want to start getting the milk in there? We'll bring you closer. All right, so I've kind of used my spoon to kind of get that a lot of this mixed in, but there's still big chunks in here, so I'm going to use my hand. I know. Ick. <laughs> At least I don't have any like plastic nails on, <laughs> as Paul reminded me. <laughs> there was one time I was um, sectioning off like a whole, like 40 pounds of chicken breast into like little freezer bags. And I had like some of those, those nails on. And at the, by the end of it all, I was so grossed out that I had to like pull those things off. And it kind of hurt a little bit. <laughs> They weren't like the, the ones that I like. It was like a glue on one. I feel like this recipe needs some must, uh, not mustard, but some pepper. I love pepper in a lot of food. Let's sprinkle some on it. No? Yeah, let's do that. Let's add it. Let's go ahead. All right, we're gonna get that mixed in and then we'll show you what we're doing next. All right, so this recipe is going to call for some carrots on the bottom. So it's going to be used as like a, a like a something to lift the meat up. A buffer. A buffer, yes. It actually called for two whole carrots, kind of. So 
If you have whole carrots, that works too. So we won't be eating these. Yeah, once that we pull the meat loaf out, we discard the carrots. Okay. So he's gonna do that on both sides and then we're gonna evenly start distributing the meat. Okay, so I've just taken my meat and just divided it in half. And so we're going to put them into these carrot line pans. So what do you think I should have as a good side for this? Because we're doing actually, we're making these the night before. So um, I won't have to make dinner tomorrow and just heat it up. So I wonder what you guys will suggest as a good side. I think we'll do some mashed potatoes though. That seems like it would be really good. I'm just kind of forming it into a loaf. Maybe that's where it gets the name. Ah, meat loaf. He's so smart. <laughs> so my, my thought process is um, we're gonna put one of these in the freezer so we could have it another time and then we'll have um, one for dinner. So we'll see how that works out. My thought process is please don't drop the raw meat anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not my first time. It's time to go put them on the Traeger. All right, so we are out here in Paul's kitchen. We are still getting this Traeger up to temp. So what does the temperature need to be at? 350. Okay, 350. And then how long does it cook for? About an hour. An hour, okay. So he's got some meat probes that he's going to put in very soon. And then about 50 minutes in or so, then we're gonna put a sauce, right? Yes. All right, so we'll, let, we'll put these on the Traeger right now. Looking good, look at that. Can be more even, good idea. All right, so we're gonna take a look at this. It's been about, what, 40 minutes or so? About. Okay, so this might take a little longer because we just noticed it wasn't at 350, so. Oh, those are smelling delicious. Okay. Oh, it's nice and toasty here. Should I put the probes on? I think so. He's got some meat probes. Now, if somebody doesn't have a Traeger, could they just bake this in the oven? Yeah, right? Of course. Of course. They could bake it in the oven. They could do it on a regular grill. They can. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Uh, so Paul's adding the meat probes in. So fancy. You want to get it right to about the middle of the meat. Middle, okay. That way you, you can get a good. Little sparks. You see that sparking? Oh, look, oh he is, he's got a little alarm. So that was about 40 minutes in. Let's take a look at to see where the meat's at right now. There it is, about a one, 104. Wait, what? what is it? So the red one is at 104. So I have the red and green in two different sides of the pan. Okay. So they're really close, they're 104. The other two are 102 and 96. So the, the yellow and the, yeah, the orange so one are in the other one? So you can see where they go. So oh, yes, it's in the second. This one is at 97 degrees and that one's at 104. Okay, okay. And we want it at 165, so we have a little while. Yeah. Okay, so we are about to go outside and go check the temps. We feel like it's getting pretty close and then we're gonna add, what are we gonna add to the top? Some barbecue sauce. Sweet Baby Ray's is Paul's favorite. The sauce is boss. <laughs> Beside mine. I mean, he, yeah. he likes when I make it too, so. Let's go take a look. All right, so those temperatures are looking like we are close to done. So how much longer do we need to cook it with the barbecue sauce on it? Um, probably just until the barbecue sauce kind of glazes on it. So maybe like 10 minutes or so? Yeah, I think I'll put 10 minutes on the on the timer and we should be good. All right, let's take a look. Oh, Mama Sita, Those look so good. So you're gonna take those probes out, right? Or are you gonna leave them in? That's what I'm gonna leave them in. All right. I just wanna know what the, the temp gets up to. And then I'm just gonna pour this on and spread it with the brush. Nice. Now we need we have more of that if you need it. Oh, this is a brand new one. Oh, okay. I'm glad we doubled the recipe. Me too. I just hope it turns out good. You know what I remember about um, this is that my mom put oatmeal in it. I think my mom used to put oatmeal in it too. Yeah, that kind of turned me off to it. Maybe, maybe uh, <laughs> that was if you're born in like 1954 type of thing. Right, so breadcrumbs, way better. I hope. 
I hope. <laughs> look at how good those look. Uh, we're going to have to taste one. Of course. Of course. <laughs> um, but look at you guys. So those, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the, the carrots underneath and... It worked like a good, like, le like it leveled it up or like it brought it up so that the oils could go underneath it. Mm -hmm. What a good idea. So we're going to put them in this um, 9 by 13 because we're going to put that in the fridge tonight um, after we have a little sample taste. Oh, you guys, look at that. Woohoo! That looks so good. We're going to have to try it. Okay. 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 You first. You first. Okay. Good. Mmm. I wanted to try to keep it until he had his. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Do you mm. want to try it, Ezzy? Yeah, I was just He's just staring at us. This is going to be dinner for tonight. Or tomorrow night. That is good. That's meatloaf, my friend. My, my son. That's good. <laughs> like your shirt. Let's root for each other. Let's root for each other, yeah. Want another bite? Do you want a bite, Is? Another one? Yeah. That one's so got good. some sauce on it. I like the sauce. Yeah. Mm. We don't make it very often if we do. I can't even remember the last time I made it. Mm. Mm. That's good. Mm -hmm. I like when we cook together. Yeah. <sighs> like on Super Bowl, we cook together. <laughs> you guys, so we're going to add the recipe down below. You can make any modifications you want to it, like the seasonings, the sauce. Um, in fact, the recipe even called for chili sauce. So you could do it however you'd like to. Put salsa on top. Whatever it is that you want to that you probably have on hand. I think that's kind of the good part about um, making meatloaf is that you can kind of make it how you have, like with your ingredients you have. So this is gonna be so good for dinner tomorrow. We'll see if we have leftovers. Put some potatoes on it. For oh yeah. Potatoes, I even have some mac and cheese. We'll see. So you guys have a wonderful evening. Uh, look for the recipe down below and stick around rollers because you just never know what we'll be rolling out next. Bye everyone.